everyone, my name is Brittany, this is Angela, and today we're coming to you from Assiniboine Park Zoo to talk about camel adaptations. We're both animal care professionals here that help look after our camels, and joining us to help us with this conversation is Zara, our resident female Bactrian camel. She is 24 years old and she is one of the most beautiful camels around, and this isn't just personal opinion. A few years ago we had a zoo conference coming through Assiniboine Park Zoo, with directors from all across the country who all commented on the fact that she is a very good looking camel. Right now, Zara is being fed some delicious food by Angela, who is handling her. And every time Zara is being fed this food, it's because she's doing something that we really like. Right now, she's standing really nicely and patiently for this Facebook live chat. So Angela is rewarding her with pieces of carrot. Something else really nice about Zara is that she's a very gentle camel. She moves very nicely and politely, which we appreciate a whole lot. Before we jump into the interesting conversation of all of the neat and unique adaptations that camels have, it's important to understand what an adaptation is. An adaptation is anything that helps an animal to survive and reproduce in the wild. So what this means is it can be a part of an animal's body or it could be something that an animal does that helps it to survive and thrive. We human beings being animals have all sorts of neat adaptations of our own. begin to rise and increase, especially in this nice weather that we're beginning to experience here in Winnipeg, we'll eventually become sweaty hot messes. But this is really important, this is a good thing, because if we didn't sweat, sweat that helps us cool off, if we didn't do this, then we could potentially overheat, which would make us very sick, and possibly result in our death. So sweat is a great adaptation that humans have. Similarly, camels also have a bunch of really awesome adaptations that help them survive in extreme environments. Camels like Zara, a Bactrian camel, come from northern China and Mongolia in an environment where it can get down to about negative 30 degrees Celsius or about 20 degrees Fahrenheit and as warm as plus 50 degrees Celsius or about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So because they have to survive this incredible range of temperatures, they have all sorts of adaptations that make sure that they stay healthy. One really great one that we can see well right now is Zara's hair. Her body is still covered in lots of thick fur, and that's because just prior to this winter, mostly in the fall season, she began growing hair to keep her warm during our cold winter months. Right now, however, being that it's springtime and it's beginning to warm up, she's shedding most of that hair. And Angela's helping with this process. We often groom our camels during this time of year. We brush them a whole lot and we'll collect a lot of that hair that can then be used as enrichment for our other animals. Some animals really like the smell of camel hair, some of our birds might use it as nesting material. Some of them might ignore it completely, but either way it's a neat thing that we can offer up to some of our other creatures here at the zoo. And that hair, if you look especially, is really concentrated in areas around her neck and around her joints. And that's because those areas are a bit more sensitive to the cold, so their bodies and their hair growth adjusts and adapts to that to make sure that their entire selves stay nice and warm. And of course, we can't talk about camel adaptations without mentioning their humps. Bactrian camels are a species of camel that have two humps. And again, Zara, being the beautiful lady that, lady that she is, has two perfect humps. And their humps are really useful in helping them deal with extreme temperatures as well. This is because their humps are basically like refrigerators, because they store all of their fat in those humps. This is important because if you think about other animals, animals like, say, polar bears that have to live in really cold environments, polar bears have bodies that are surrounded by fat. And that's because fat is a really good insulator. It's something that's really good at helping keep animals like polar bears warm. I actually have a great question here about water. Somebody's asking, how much water does a camel drink and um, does that change from winter to summer? Yeah, it does a whole lot. So camels experience different seasons where they live in the wild. And there is definitely a dry season and then a wetter or 
rainy or colder season. And in that dry season, they don't typically have the access to a lot of water. So they can go up to seven months, depending on what sources you read, without drinking water directly. However, they are getting water from a lot of the plants they eat during this time. However, if they have no access to water and no access to food whatsoever, they can only survive for about five days without water. And I believe the statistic is they can drink something like 113 gallons of water in half an hour, which is a lot. That's a lot of water. Question here asking, why do some camels have one hump and, one, and some have two? Yeah, so why do some camels have one hump and why do some have two? That is because there are two different species of camel. Zara is a Bactrian camel, and Bactrian camels can be found in the wild in northern China and Mongolia. Bactrian camels have two humps, and a good way to remember that Bactrians have two is if you think of the letter B for Bactrian, you flip it, flip it on its side, you have two humps. The other species of camel is a dromedary, or Arabian camel. Dromedary camels have one hump, and they're found in northern Africa and the Middle East. And if you take the D for dromedary and flip it on its side, you have one hump. So there's a little trick to remember the differences between dromedaries and Arabians. Great. I'm just going to get you a little bit closer to the camera. It's a, The wind is making it a little hard to hear, I, I hear, on the comments. Um, a few questions about what Zara is eating right now and what a camel would usually eat. So right now, here at the zoo, Zara is eating carrots. Carrots are a treat for her. They're a training reinforcement tool that we have. She loves carrots, so when she does things that we like, that's what we give her. They also eat a lot of hay here at the zoo. However, in the wild, one of the other adaptations that camels have is a really hard mouth. I don't know if anybody can see her face really well right now, but camels have lots of teeth, over 30, but the top of their mouths is just a hard palate that they'll grind food against. And their <laughs> lips are also really tough and really strong. And what all this means is that they are well adapted to eating really prickly, hard foods. So foods that some animals with softer mouths or without that hard palate might avoid, camels will happily, happily eat. And how much food does a camel eat during one day? Hmm. That's here at the zoo, they eat four flakes a day, which is about the equivalent of 15 pounds of hay per day. But as we're in the wild, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, how old is Zara and what is a camel's lifespan? Zara is 24 years of age. Her birthday is just coming up. And the record for a camel is 52 that we're aware of. However, saying that camels all live to be 52 is like saying that people live to be 120. They won't all live to be that old, but mid-30s, that's about average. That's a good life expectancy for camels. Someone was asking earlier, do camels spit? Do they, they, they ever can. spit on their keepers? <laughs> they can, yes. We have seen our camels spit at each other, and spitting only happens in certain conditions. It happens when they either feel threatened or scared, or if they just want something to go away. Not necessarily because they're threatened or scared, just because they're annoyed. However, we as keepers, we do our best to never be threatening or scary to the camels. And we certainly do our best as well to be a really positive thing in their lives. So I can happily say that as of right now, none of us are aware of have ever been spat out by one of our camels. But they're capable of it. There's nothing stopping Zara right now if she felt like it. Someone was just asking, do we trim their hooves? No, so we don't trim the camel's hooves, and that's because our camels don't have hooves. So if you have a good look at her feet, camels belong to a group of animals called the tylopods, and tylopod means squishy foot pads, basically. So she does have two nails on each one of her feet, but underneath her feet is just a squishy pad, almost like a pillow. And so there's no need to trim anything there, and just walking around will help protect her nails all on its own. Um, back to adaptation, somebody was asking, do the camels spend much time inside in the winter? How do they adapt to, you know, a cold Winnipeg winter compared to a hot Winnipeg summer? So, Bactrian camels, like Zara, they're actually super well adapted to our environment here in Winnipeg. That's because, again, where they come from, it can get as cold as negative 30 and as warm as plus 50. So she has that really lovely winter coat that keeps her warm. However, that being said, on the really cold days, we do have a barn that our camels can go inside of. We'll often give them access. So what this means is the camels have the choice to either be outside or inside. It's totally up to them. However, whenever they're given this choice, they still spend most of their day outside, even on our coldest winter days. Great. Um, a few questions about what camels are related to. Are they related to horses? Are they related to llamas? What kind of family are they a part of? Yeah, so and 
by Cunhas. So dromedary, Bactrian, Guanaco by Cunha, those are the wild camelids, and then you have the wands and the alpacas, which are descendants that are domesticated camelids. But that's it. They're a pretty small group at this point in time. Great question here. Somebody asking, what kind of friends would camels have? Do they hang out with any other types of animals in the wild? Would they be intermingling with anybody else? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, I think they're pretty laid back unless, um, you know, they sense predators and that sort of thing. Um, they mostly, I think, hang out with each other because they would be in larger birds. Any other herbivores, I'm sure they wouldn't mind being around. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question here, uh, how do they sleep and where would they sleep at the zoo and in the wild? So they sleep wherever, wherever they want to sleep. Currently, you might not be able to see right now, but we have our dromedary camel Camellia out on our field. She's just laying on her side in a sand pit. That's where she, where she tends to sleep and where she's most comfortable. But camels are really well adapted to laying down on surfaces that are super warm. And this is because they have keratin pads or calluses that help to protect them. And you might be able to see, there might be hair covering it a whole lot right now. But Zara has really hard calluses on her knees and also right in the middle of her chest in between her legs, she has a big callus called a pedestal. And all of these calluses, what they do is that when she lays down, if she were to lay down on, again, a hot surface, it protects her body from becoming burned. So that's another great adaptation that camels have. Great. Can camels run? How fast would a camel be? They can run. So camels can run at a speed of about 40 kilometers an hour for a decent amount of time, but a top speed is about 67 kilometers per hour. So imagine driving down a school zone, a little bit faster than that is how fast they can go. And a little bit faster than our speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour is their top speed. Great. And who would be a camel's predator in the wild? Um, I don't think they generally have a lot of predators. Uh, the Bactrian camels here uh, share some of their range with like snow leopards. So some of the smaller, either weaker camels or baby camels would be um, food for that. Or like uh, those would be their predators. Um, and then just basically us um, with losing a lot of their habitat to farming and stuff like that. So unfortunately, there aren't too many of these guys left in the wild. But <laughs> <laughs> a question here: Will this camel get a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually get out scissors and cut her hair off, but she is losing her hair yeah. just naturally a whole lot right now. And was probably this was going to demonstrate. This was covered in hair not too long ago and it's all sort of coming out now as we brush it for her or as she rubs on things it's all <laughs> shedding out. Um, so for the summer pretty much all of this hair will be gone and she will be almost bald all over. Um, so yeah it's coming out as you can see falling off like a like your dog at home. <laughs> um, I have another question here that you guys might be a bit biased to, but do our camels have a favorite animal care professional or <laughs> zookeeper that they work with? Um, I, I don't know. Myself, maybe. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I think uh, anyone with the treats, a lot of the time, they will be friends with. They do get to know certain people. Um, you can tell which ones um, they're used to and which ones are new, especially uh, like Zara here is a little bit um, cautious with new people sometimes, whereas Camellia, our dromedary, uh, likes to test new people and they come around. Um, so they do definitely recognize and, and attach to people, but I don't know if they really have a favorite. I think it's whoever has given them the treats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one more great question and I think we're gonna start wrapping it up. Um, how does a camel keep the sand out of their eyes? help to prevent sand from flying into their face and one of their eyelids is clear so they have a clear membrane that can cover their eyes that way they can still see even if sand's going around everywhere great is there anything else you want to add about camels or their adaptations before we wrap up uh, there are so many so many neat adaptations one last one just throw it in there they can close their nose holes so they can shut their nostrils closed that way just like their eyes they can prevent sand or small particles from flying into their nose Great. Yeah, so thank you so much everyone for joining us and learning a little bit about camel adaptations and for meeting Zara. 
and hopefully you'll be able to join us next Wednesday at one o'clock where you can learn about the draft horses that live at Peter's